we're going to hear about Carson, who is a future PA. Congrats. And hear about her kind of journey to becoming a PA and specifically about her study abroad experience through Atlantis and her trip. So I want to know first, have you heard of Atlantis before I like ever sent you an email or wherever you heard about it? So you guys know my goal is to tell you about different opportunities and things that may be interesting to you for your application process, but also just for becoming a PA. Personally, I love to travel. So I think Atlantis is a really cool opportunity that you're going to potentially find to be a good fit, just depending on what you're looking for. And I think by hearing Carson's story, I think it's helps just to hear different pre-PA journeys and what different people did and how that affected their applications and their application process. So we will dive into some of that. So do you want to give us just like a short introduction, Carson? Tell us about you, where you're from, and then we'll get into some pre-PA stuff. My name is Carson, and I am an Atlantis alumni. So I went on my trip back in 2019, so right before the pandemic. I went to Rome, Italy over the summer for a three-week trip. And then following that, I came back, um, graduated from the University of Washington in Seattle, spent my gap year there in Seattle. And then I just moved across the country because I'm going to PA school in Tennessee. So that's a little bit about me and my education background and where I'm starting school. What brought you to the PA profession? Did you go into college wanting to be a PA or is that something you figured out later? I originally went into college thinking that I wanted to be a doctor. And my mom is the one who actually was like, she saw PAs for, or nurse practitioners, kind of same idea when she was younger. And she was like, have you decided, or have you taken a look at like either of these professions? And I hadn't really put a lot of thought to it. And then it was like my sophomore year of college and I kind of figured that for me, the biggest part of medicine is like, I just wanted to have my own autonomy and like have my own patients. I didn't feel like I just had to be head surgeon or anything like that. And so I was really excited that in the PA profession, you could have your own autonomy, have all of your own patients, but also have the supervision of a doctor because it's almost like you're working as a team, which was something I really liked. That way you're giving your patients the best care that they can have if you're working with multiple people besides just one. And so it kind of stuck out to me in that way. Plus a little bit less schooling was also very attractive to me as well. <laughs> yes, for sure. So you decided like sophomore year, did you have to switch your trajectory at all? Or were you already mostly on track for PA also? So the nice thing about the University of Washington it's a very hard school, like academically, but all their pre-med programs are kind of set up so that the beginning is a lot of the prereqs that you have to have for anything you want to do, whether that be like pre-PA, pre-med, pre-dental, all that kind of stuff. I decided early enough on that I could add in the classes that I needed within my schedule. And then I took a couple extra classes during the summertime, just because I wanted to make sure that I graduated on time. Um, and as a lot of people who are here know, you have to have a lot of prerequisites for a lot of different PA schools. So I just wanted to make sure that my application was as competitive as I could be for the most part. Yeah, for sure. And so you had academics on track. Where did your experience fit in with patient care experience, shadowing, volunteering, or were you planning to take a year? <laughs> I was already planning on taking a gap year, partially because I was taking so many classes. I was a little burnt out and I wanted to just make sure I went into school really fresh and excited to be there again. The reason I went into medicine is because I was so excited about all these classes, but also just time to beef up my application and all my hours and whatnot. So for patient care hours, I was a physical therapy technician. And so I did that for about a year, almost two years, I would say, is what I did that for. So I started, and I don't recommend this. I was, a, so I graduated in December of 2020. My class should have been 2021. And I took on a full-time job starting September of 
2020. So I was working full time in the fall and doing classes full time, which I really do not recommend anybody do. I was had no free time and I really just did it because at the time it was after COVID and it was so hard to find anybody who would hire you for patient care hours. And so it was just the first job that I got and I didn't want to say no and have to wait to get my hours. So I did it. Um, hopefully you guys will have a little better luck than I did <laughs> trying to find jobs to get your hours. But I did that. And then when I graduated in December after that, I just worked full time. So I just continued to work pretty much up until school. So gotcha. Is PT a technician different than assistant? It's like a physical therapy aid, same idea. So it's even different from like clinic to clinic because there were places that I interviewed at that the physical therapy technicians weren't even hand on hands on. They just did a lot of like computer work, stuff like that versus Mm -hmm. like the clinic that I worked for was very hands on and we were seeing patients pretty much all throughout the day. I was getting them warmed up, doing exercises, everything with them. So it was very dependent on your location, where you where you worked and how much trust the physical therapist had with you. And I guess is how much they would allow you to work with patients and how many like hands-on hours I would say you would get from the job. Gotcha. Where did your Atlantis trip fit in? So this was summer of my, between my sophomore and junior year at this time, I knew I was already taking summer classes, but my school had A term and B term. And so I was taking a B term class, had a little bit of extra time at the beginning of my summer to do a study abroad or go home. And I decided that I always, I guess I always wanted to do a study abroad. But for me personally, it was really expensive to study abroad during the school year. And with taking all the science prerequisites, it was really hard to fit that in and to be able to leave for a quarter or two. So Atlantis just fit in my schedule really well because it's a shorter period of time so that you can still take it off of work or in between school on breaks. And in addition to that, it just, for me, made more sense because if I'm going to spend the money on a study abroad, like I wanted to make sure that it went towards my PA school application. And so it all just fell into place between both of those two things. Okay, cool. Yeah. And we'll talk more about the actual trip too. Okay. We've got your timeline figured out. So you were applying to PA school during your gap year. How many times did you apply to PA school? So I applied, that was my first round of application. And I applied probably with right over 2000 hours of patient care. I got a lot of overtime work, which was really great for me trying to get as many hours as I can and so I applied to I want to say 12 or 13 schools I can't remember exactly the number and I was talking to Savannah about this but I only got accepted into one I interviewed at two got waitlisted at one and accepted into one school so that's where I'm going that's perfect so we know that you're moving or you moved across the country What went into your process of choosing schools to apply to? Did you want to move or were you looking for certain things in program? A little bit of everything, I would say. I did a lot of research when I was like a freshman and a sophomore in college. And before I even got to the application process, I think I put together a list of probably 25 to 30 schools looking at different things that I liked about them of like, possibly, I possibly want to apply here. I possibly want to apply here. So that one year before my application, I started narrowing it down based off of what I had grades wise, what I had prerequisite wise, the cost of applying to the school, all those kinds of things. For me, there was, I guess, location was somewhat of a factor. I applied to Tennessee actually, because my parents moved out here. Um, when I was a sophomore in college and they were like, you'd love it out here. And there was a PA school 10 minutes from their house. And they were like, you should just apply to see if you'll get in. And I was like, okay, never lived in the South before. And I really wanted to get out of Washington state and try something new because I've been there my whole life. And so that was kind of how Tennessee came along. And I also applied to a lot of schools on the West coast just because that's where I was from. It was familiar So a little bit of that and really also just based off of 
what I read online about these programs and I don't know, making sure for me, it was important that I was going to be taught a lot of different specialties, not just emphasis on primary care, which is great. And that's something I definitely want to learn about, but I just wanted to make sure that I got a well-rounded education and heard or got to learn a little bit about everything. So going into my career, I can make a more well-rounded decision if that makes sense. Okay. So let's talk a little bit about your application process a little bit more in depth. Were there any red flags on your application or anything that you felt concerned about going into it? I think my, I guess three things, I never thought any of them were like big blaring red flags where I was like, I felt like I had to, I guess, explain myself. But one part of my application that I was nervous about is I actually, I didn't fail OCHEM the first time I took it, but I got a really low grade in OCHEM. And so I actually retook it while I was in school and I got a four. But that still shows up on your application. And obviously, if you're going through transcripts and you see a really low grade, that's a little bit of a red flag. But I was obviously able to talk about that, retook it and worked a lot harder, got a better grade. Something I was really nervous about is I thought I was applying more on the lower end of hours. A lot of PA schools, especially on the West Coast, I've noticed, really want you to have a couple years of experience. And so I was nervous that maybe 2000 wouldn't be enough going in. And then I also, I guess for like healthcare experience, didn't have as much experience in that box. Except for I did have Atlantis, that's where I ended up fitting that in my application. But I wasn't really aware that there was like a healthcare experience box along with patient care until a lot closer to the application. And so I didn't have a lot of time to accumulate that. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. So let's talk a little bit more about going into your application and Atlantis. So when you did this trip, can you just tell us about your trip and what you did? I want to hear about like international medicine. I'm very interested in how that works, but yeah. Yeah, absolutely. That is probably the main thing that I actually talk to students about and one of the biggest benefits to going on a trip with Atlantis. And so what Atlantis is, is we have both service research projects and shadowing, but shadowing is about 90% of our, I guess when you go onto our website, that's what you're going to learn about. That's the biggest thing that we do. And so shadowing is basically you're going abroad, choosing a city. So for example, I went to Rome for mine and I was there for three weeks. And so you basically arrive there on a Saturday. On Sunday, you get acquainted. You have a the leader there to help you. They speak the native language wherever you might be. They can help you out in case you get lost, anything like that. They show you how to take the bus. If you need to take the bus to get to your hospital, how to get breakfast, everything. And then that following Monday is basically when you start shadowing. And you are assigned a different specialty for each week that you are there. So I was assigned three different specialties. And you're shadowing doctors from about 8 a.m. till 1 or 2 in the afternoon. And it differs depending on when surgeries end. If they end really a little bit later than that, too, then they'll keep you in the surgery. So you're not going in and out of their OR, stuff like that. You can expect that from Monday to Thursday that she'll be seeing one specialty per week, get to just basically follow around the doctor. And students ask me what that looks like, but it's so different for one, each specialty and each location that you go to. So my, from my experience, mine was a very surgical heavy rotation or I guess hospital. So I saw pretty much just surgeries from the entire time I was there. I saw internal medicine, emergency surgery, and cardiology while I was there. And so each one was so different. Um, Cardiology is so fast paced, especially in Italy where I was at. And emergency just varied so much day by day, depending on what what came in. Whereas internal was just a lot of routine surgeries and so got a big grasp of all different kinds of medicine when I went abroad, which was something that was super beneficial for me. I guess coming back to and going, applying to PA school, saying that I had seen I think four or five different specialties of shadowing was really beneficial. And then outside of that, while you're on your Atlantis trip, 
on Mondays and Wednesdays, you have like a cultural experience where you get to go to dinner. In Italy, we had lots of three or four course meals where we had like gelato and bruschetta and lots of pizza and pasta, which was great. And then Fridays are your excursion days where usually you'll go and do another cultural experience, either go just right outside the city or something in the city. It just depends on your group leader and what they choose for you guys that week. But yeah. And coming back around to your question, Savannah, about, and I guess just medicine abroad, I think that was the most valuable piece of information that I was able to take with me into PA school interviews. And just being able to talk about the difference between when I was in Rome, it's a public health care system, which you might learn, you might've learned about that in classes and all that kind of stuff. I was a public health major. So that's, I knew a lot about it, but actually working in a public health system versus what we have here in the U.S. was just so much more different than I expected in both like good and bad ways. Just really cool to be in that setting and learn right there from the doctors. And the doctors talk so much about it. And I remember taking so many notes about my experience and all that kind of stuff and being able to use that actually in my interviews when I did interview for PA school. Interesting. Okay. So it sounds like you get some time to like also explore, which is good. Did you feel safe the whole time? It sounds like you're with a group. How many people were with your group? Yeah. So group sizes change depending on location, but it's typically about eight to 16 students on average per location and out of safety. Yes. And it's really great. So half of our team actually works in Europe. And so they're actually there doing all the scouting to find the housing that you stay in. And as a heads up, the housing is included with the price that you see on our website. So you live in an apartment style housing and they always are striving to make sure that you guys are staying in the safest area of whatever city it might be that you'll be in. I know in Rome, we were in the Tristevere area, which is actually where a ton of students stay during their trip. And not even in just Atlantis, but that's where a lot of universities have their study abroad at. It's this area that's very safe and well-known in Rome. And they do that pretty much for all of their other locations as well. Cool. That's, that's nice to have people there who know what they're doing. We were talking a little bit beforehand. I did not get to do a study abroad in college. It was one of those things on my list that I would have loved to do. But at UGA, it was interesting. The ones that they had for the school, honestly, just did not fit with my major at all. Like they, they had one in Italy, but it was all like art history, which I guess would have been fine. But for me, that didn't do much for me with my classes Yeah, and used up all my electives. And so anyway, it just didn't make sense. And I think they had a couple others. They had one in London and Oxford and stuff. But yeah, like I definitely couldn't go for a whole semester because I wouldn't, the classes like wouldn't really work for what I needed. And then the summer ones also just didn't make sense. So anyway, so I didn't do that. But I did some mission trips through a campus ministry. I went to Jamaica for a week and Amsterdam for two weeks, which were amazing trips. And that was service that gave me volunteer hours, which was great. No, it was amazing too. I think I was the one who was like, I can go abroad and do this whole thing by myself. I just had that attitude, which I'm so glad that I didn't (laughs) because with Atlantis, you do have either at least one or two people that are like your group leaders while you're there. And they definitely are very helpful, help you navigate everything, know the city. A lot of them are from that area, live in that city, which was so helpful to a lot of, especially for a lot of things that I like didn't, I guess, didn't expect coming up from the trip and they were there for us, which was fantastic. That's very, yeah, very good. Did y'all, did your group like talk ahead of time to get to know each other or you just show up and you're like, hey, we're all here <laughs> for us? We, you meet your, I guess the people that are in your groups about a month before you leave or about six weeks before you leave. It just depends on your trip and all that kind of stuff. But so you'll get to know them a little bit beforehand. So we all talked a little bit. 
didn't know each other too well. And actually all of us were from completely different States besides there were two girls from California, but one was from Northern and one was from Southern, which are okay. very different areas also. Yeah. Everyone was just from such a cool different people. area and yeah, it was awesome. So I know people all over the U S now, which is just great. Cool. Were they, yeah, we went in gay or pre-med, like a little bit of everything. Yeah. So we actually had a decent mix. We had, I would say, I guess there was like 16 of us. So probably about 10 pre-med. There was about three of us that already knew that we were pre-PA. We had a couple students that were like, I'm not sure if I want to go into medicine, but this is my experience to see if I want to go into medicine or not. But we actually had a guy who wasn't even going to like necessarily to med school. He was doing an MD like a DO program of some sort, but he was doing more so research and wanted to know more about like medical stuff in Europe. And so he was there doing that also, which was really cool. And I don't think all the students, I know like one of my good friends on the program was pre-med and he actually switched to pre-PA after the trip. And he's six months ahead of me in PA school right now. And we still keep in really (laughs) close contact. He tells me all the books I need to read to learn about different I guess, experiences about PA school and like cardiology is like, oh, you have to get this book to learn how to read EKGs and like all this kind of stuff, which is so convenient to have them. The medical community and the pre-PA community or PA community in general, probably even more so, is pretty small. Like you will run across these people again and again. So it's nice to go ahead and start networking and making those connections because they will follow you. How was the housing? Was it good? What are we expecting? It's very variable, obviously, depending on where you go. From my experience, we had a huge apartment. It was amazing. We had a four bedroom apartment when we went. So there's eight of us in this apartment, but the rooms were huge. We also had, and this is pretty typical of almost all of your Atlantis apartments, you'll have a sink and a stove. That way you can cook while you're there if you want to cook. Additionally, you have a fridge and a refrigerator and a freezer. Um, You also will have a washer and dryer in your unit as well, or at least nearby so that you could do laundry while you're there so you're not stuck wearing the same clothes. Although I will say... Laundry looks a little different in Italy. It's definitely not the same as the U.S., but you do have the ability to do, to wash all your clothes. And like my apartment had all four bedrooms and a huge balcony that overlooked all of the bedrooms. You could walk out and you could see the whole city off the balcony. It was amazing. So can I talk more highly about that too? Yes, that is, yes, fabulous. So somebody asked, are all the shadowing trips three weeks or does it depend on where you go? So the shadowing trips are dependent. We have trips that are one week long all the way up to 10 weeks. And so the majority that you'll see on the website are three-week programs. But you could do six-week, nine-week, 10-week, or do a three-week plus a one-week program. So it really just depends. Also, you guys could take a look on our website. If you guys do decide to go there, you can take a look on our cities tab and you can go straight there on the left-hand side. You can actually search by like length of program, or you could search by city. So if you already know, you're like, let's say you only can do one week or you only want to do 10 weeks, whatever it might be. You can check those off so you can see what's available to you. Or if let's say you're like, I love Rome. It sounds great after what Carson said. You could go and check out on the website too and just do Italy and see all the Rome options as well. So that's super easy to navigate to find what you're looking for. Cool. Are there most popular locations or what are some of the like main locations that people can go to? Yeah, that's a good question. There is more popular locations. I would say there's popular locations based on price point. Okay. Uh, We have a lot of people, for example, in Italy, we have Pavia and Genoa that are at the lower price point that are super popular. We have lots of students who do those two options. We also have in Spain, like Merida and Zaragoza are typically pretty popular. And so you could take a look at those also versus like we have higher price points also, which 
due to cost of living. As you can imagine, living in a bigger city costs more. So that's why you see the influx in price. But we have, I would say, like Madrid, Milan, Rome, and Barcelona are probably our four big cities that will fill up the quickest. Those all sound amazing. Does shadowing take care of healthcare experiences required? So shadowing and healthcare experience, that's what Carson was talking about a little bit. They're actually separate categories on CASPA. CASPA has a ton of categories. You don't necessarily have to have all of them filled, but it can look good on your application to have more of them filled up than not. So healthcare experience is experience in a medical setting where you are not directly involved with patient care. So for your Atlanta trip, you chose to put it under healthcare experience versus shadowing. Is that correct? Yeah. And that's just because I also already had a decent amount of shadowing experience. Yeah. Um, and to be honest, just from my experience, a lot of PA schools didn't require that you had a certain amount of hours of shadowing. They, a lot of times would say on their website, it'd be nice if you shadowed like a doctor or two or yeah, like a recommendation. And so I shadowed a PA and a doctor in the U.S. already. And like I was saying earlier, I didn't have a lot of like healthcare experience. And like you were saying, it's not hands-on because it's shadowing. But I, as I was talking about earlier, you learn so much about what a public healthcare system looks like. And so being able to just work in a different healthcare system and learning so much from the doctors, I really sought it to, to be a healthcare experience as well. And so that's why I put it in that section versus shadowing. But really, you, the nice thing is you could swing it either way. So if you're a student who is pretty early on in the process and you're like, I don't know if I like what if I'm going to do PA or what I'm going to do or you know what I'm saying? You could go to do this program and then come around to CASPA in time to fill out your application. And it's nice because let's say you got a ton of shadowing hours like me and you want to put it as healthcare, you can, which is great. Or if you want to show PA schools that you've shadowed physicians, then you can also put that in the shadowing box. So it's pretty yeah. versatile. Yeah. And that's where there is a lot of flexibility with your experiences coming down to how you describe them, figuring out where they fit best on your application. Okay. So Jessica said, do the specialties change based on where you travel or before you choose your destination, does Atlanta show you where you'll be shadowing? So I think the gist of that is, do you have a say in what you're observing or is it just random seeing different stuff? Yeah. So for each location that you would shadow, specialties are going to be different. And that's just obviously because based off of what hospitals offer, what they specialize in. There's some hospitals that Atlantis offers that are like pediatrics. And so you'll see basically everything according to like kids and stuff like that. So it does differ on the hospital that you're at. The nice thing is you can actually go onto our website, same thing. If you actually look into the cities um, and you can click on those, if you scroll down, it gives you a little information about them and it'll tell you the hospital that you would be shadowing at. So you can actually do your own research look at it outside of Atlantis and see what are they known for? What do they have a lot of at this specific hospital? But as for specialties, what Atlantis tries to do is before you guys go on your trip, you'll get a list of about, I guess it also depends on location. Cause for example, like Rome had so many different options cause it was a huge hospital. It was one of the biggest public health care hospitals in Italy and so we got to choose what our top three is. And Atlantis tries to align you with those top three. They can't guarantee that you'll see all three, but they try to let you see what you want. Whereas some hospitals that are on the smaller side, you may not be able to choose from as many, or you might just be doing the three that they have available that week. So it's really dependent based on size of hospital and how many people are shadowing and all that kind of stuff. But from my experience, I would say most of the time you should be able to choose from a list that they give you. Okay. So somebody asked, when did you start, this is going back, we didn't cover this. When did you start applying to PA school during your gap year? So I guess, when did you submit? So I submitted, let's see, I started filling out May of 2021. So okay. that was a little over a year ago. And I submit my applications by 
most of them by the beginning of June, but the last one's by the middle of June, I would say. I made, I made all of my like experience, I wrote all these documents up as much as I could before the beginning of the cycle so that those things could be plugged in and fill those out pretty quickly. A lot, and I didn't account for this, and a lot of PA schools will ask you to fill out secondary applications. And so that's probably what took the most time. That took me a good month and a half to write all of those secondary applications and submit those. Okay. But I think, like I said, I think they were all submitted by mid-June. Okay, got it. And a question I just thought of, is there a place where somebody could say, oh, like I want to learn about this trip or connect with people? I really suggest if you are interested and you just want to ask some questions, maybe meet like an alumni, go to the website and fill out. There's a couple spots where you can ask to meet someone or do the live chat option and get to chat with someone. You'll get assigned to an alumni like myself. So somebody who's already been on the trip, already got that experience and is very knowledgeable about it. So that way you can talk one-on-one -on -one with them about their experience and how that affected their medical school, whatever it might be that they're doing just get more information. And I'm trying to think not that I don't know if there's necessarily anywhere where there's a place for students to go to and talk to each okay. other. But you can also look on the website. There are forgetting what it's called, but it's like where students have gone on trips and wrote like a little blurb about their trip and their experience. Yeah. And we have a ton of those on the website. And also you can link those to like different medical schools that they were accepted to. So it'll be like a student, for example, who went on an Atlantis trip, but it was accepted into Duke Medical School or something like that. So you can yeah. see where they were accepted, how they thought about the program and what, how it shaped them to be a med whatever medical provider they are. Did your trip come up in interviews? Did you bring it up or did they bring it up so that you could talk about it some? Yeah, I think I am definitely brought it up. Because it's a very unique experience. I don't think they're going to ask if a lot of students have yeah. been abroad and all that kind of stuff. Right. But I definitely used it in my interviews. And I wish I remember what the question was. But the school that I got into, they asked a question actually about public or about privatized health care, like a situational question here in the U.S. And I can't remember what they said, but they were talking they asked me some sort of question. I was actually able to talk about differences between the Italian healthcare system and the U.S. healthcare system, which was really unique. Nobody else could say that. And even just going and working in the Italian healthcare system, you learn so much about just how systems are ran. And I remember coming back to the U.S. and doing like a compare and contrast of like how things are different or how they're the same. And it was so valuable to have that information going into interviews and be able to talk about the differences between those two. Yes, that is a very, I think with doing anything abroad, internationally with medical experiences, that is the most valuable thing. And that's what, when I was in PA school, I got to do a mission trip to the Dominican Republic. And then after PA school, once I was working as a Durham PA, I went to Kenya and like, Number one, I think just seeing patients in a different place and realizing that patients are all the same, no matter where you are, is really cool. And then also, but seeing how diseases can vary based on where you're at. But it just gives you a such a different perspective. Yeah, absolutely. We had a submitted question to financial aid, paying for the trips. What are the options? Are there options? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And that's probably the most asked question that we get. Of course. Yeah. So unfortunately, Atlantis doesn't do any full ride scholarships, anything like that. As of right now, they're not offering scholarships. But if you guys look on our website as well, we have a whole sec a whole section on financing and aid and how you're able to either fundraise for this trip. And there's actually examples of, of successful students and for example, like crowdfunding and how they set up their account to be able to pay for a trip through Atlantis. And so you can see that and how they were successful. Um, we also have other payment options for students. So it is a decently large number to be able to pay to go on a trip. If you do, we do have pay in full, which is just upfront, then you're done. Don't have to worry about it. But 
we also have two other options for students. So we also have monthly payments, which is very convenient because it actually splits up the cost of the trip over all the months up until one month before you leave for your trip. So per se, you go on a trip in June. So you have until May to make those payments. And so it makes it so much more affordable so you can work a job and pay that monthly chunk in order to go on a trip, which is really great. Or even if like your parents are helping you out, wherever it might be, it's just a little bit less of a blow to the wallet than paying all at once. We also use Uplift Loans, which is basically for, it's you might've heard about it before. It's for travel and stuff like that, but it's basically a loan that they will give to you and helps you finance a trip over 12, 18 or 24 months. And you can use that to make even like less payments per month if that's something you're interested in. The interest rate is dependent on your credit score they do a soft poll when they look for it but realistically from the students who've done it the actual money that they paid in interest was not a whole lot so it does make it worth it for students who do really want to do it and then last point I like to check or touch on as well is a lot of universities will actually have like a general study abroad scholarship that you can use towards Atlantis and a lot of study abroad offices know who we are. So your school might have a scholarship that you can get through them in order to put towards Atlantis. And so I always tell students to check that out first, see if that's something that they would be willing to do as well. There are so many, I think school resources that people just don't know about. And yeah, I think it's, yeah, you kind of have to dig sometimes to find some of that too. So when I was going on my mission trips, I basically told everyone that I knew and my family, which a mission trip, I know it's a little different, but this is still for people you love going towards your future. Don't give me a Christmas present. Don't give me a birthday present. If, even if you give me $20 towards this trip, that would mean so much. And used that trip coming up as something that they could contribute to if they wanted to. Absolutely. And I always tell students too, like you would be so surprised how much your family and friends want to help you out if you just ask and like actually put in the effort and go out and try to figure this out. If you, it, fundraising is something you're interested in as well, check out our website. But I definitely encourage you to do it because it's been very successful for students in the past. Yeah, I just am such a yeah. big student of traveling and I think it's like such a great way to incorporate different cultures and views and things that you learn into your practice yeah and I was gonna say that too not even just about obviously these things look great on your application for PA school but just the provider that you'll become when you do get the opportunity to go out and see what different populations are like outside of the U.S. it just makes you so much of a more like a better provider just being able to see so many different experiences and have this like empathy and understanding for people everywhere yeah, I agree. So someone said, should I still shadow a PA if I do the Atlantis program? And I think my opinion is shadow everyone you can. If there's anyone who will let you come shadow them, yes. So yeah, you definitely want to still shadow a PA, but if you have any doctors, nurses, anybody, go for it. And that's what, I don't know. There aren't that many countries that have an actual PA role that they call PAs yet. Like I said, Kenya does have PAs. The UK has PAs, but they're a little different. I've done a couple podcast interviews with UK PAs. If that's something you're interested in, New Zealand has PAs, Canada. Yeah, I'm not really sure if anywhere else really has adopted the PA yet. But yeah, is there any, are you only shadowing doctors or are there other healthcare professionals that you're shadowing? on the trip. Yeah. So you nailed that already. There aren't a lot of PAs in the countries that we have. But you do get to see a ton of other healthcare, such as like nursing and like just you get to see everything that's going on outside of that. And you'll get asked to a lot of times in secondary applications and interviews. I think this is probably one of the most common questions asked is like, why do you want to be a PA instead of a doctor or a nurse or all that kind of stuff? So it's to be able to say you have shadowed that because like profession yeah. and be able to compare them and contrast them is very valuable as well. No, 
I think so for sure. And I've seen a lot of PAs and pre PAs who are thinking about thinking that they want to work abroad. Like they want to go eventually work internationally. And I think if that is something you're interested in at any point in your career, doing something like this ahead of time to spend time in that environment. Once you're out of PA school, <laughs> your, your opportunities and ability to do some of these things becomes a lot more difficult. So somebody said, are there any downsides to doing this program? Any, yeah, any, I don't know, thing that people should know about before they sign up? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, it's a good question. And I saw this question earlier and I was trying to think about downsides and I'm not sure if I can necessarily think of any downsides. I think there's so many positives to yeah. this entire experience. And I'm trying to think, I don't think that there was any like bad parts about it that I can remember. So did you yeah. like seeing a three week trip? Did you wish it was longer or you felt like that was like a good amount of time? Yeah. I really enjoyed a three week trip if I had the financial means, because realistically not everybody can afford to go on these long trips for 10 weeks because it is going to be more expensive. I always tell students, I think it would be super valuable if you had the time and could afford it. Do a six week program and do one Italy trip and then do a Spain trip. So that way you're getting to experience not only one, but two different. Yeah. I guess, medical settings that you can bring back with you. And I think that's really valuable, but I think that like, a three-week trip is also really great. You're not going to miss out on like all, you know what I'm saying? If you go on a three-week trip, you're not going to miss out on everything because you didn't go six weeks. And a one-week trip is really great also, especially for all my friends that are on a budget. It is expensive. So you are still getting that one week abroad and getting that experience. But I always tell students, like, I thought three was like the perfect amount because I was so scared <laughs> when I first got there. And it took me a good couple of days to like calm down and find my place and all that kind of stuff. So that's yeah. why I really appreciated being there for longer than one week. But there's so many options for every different student who comes in. So you can't go wrong. Nice. Someone said, would they give letters of recommendation? I don't know. That would be like the best use of one of your letters. Just because it's like a short period can. of time. They can, yeah. though. So they yeah. can, though, for shadowing. Yeah. yeah, they can. But obviously, that's up to them. And if they decide that they want to write you a letter of recommendation and if you stay in contact with them, that's something you'd have to talk to one of the physicians about there. Okay. Let me share those. Okay, so we we're talking about the website. So this is the website. I went up at the top where there's a little three thing and clicked cities just to pull this up. So someone said, can you talk about the research aspect of Atlantis? Is there any research involved? And yeah, do people have to apply or you just like sign up? What is yep. that? So you do have to apply. And if you guys are interested in applying after you, even if you're not hundred percent sure, if you want to go, I always recommend to apply. It takes 15 minutes max to fill out the application. That way you can kind of get to the interview and it's called a two way interview that you'll have with an alumni representative. And that way they ask you questions, you ask them questions. It's a good way to find out more information about Atlantis. But what was the question before that? I think I missed that. Is there a research? Oh, the service research, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So we yeah. also have a service research project, which is separate than our shadowing. And that's, we only have a couple of programs usually that do service research per summer or per summer that you go. Some of that. It's a very unique experience that really touches on more, more so on like public health and working with a big corporation. Like we work with UNICEF based out of Switzerland. And so you would get there and work with a group of students and basically use already a red or readily available data along with surveying and all that kind of stuff in order to answer some sort of healthcare question that um, UNICEF would be asking. And each question is really different. And so that's why it's a very vague explanation of what the service research is going to look like for you because each mm -hmm. project is different. But that's what you can expect with that service research project, project as opposed to shadowing. Okay. I was looking at this. I was looking at the countries. So you could see the, yeah, you can 
select like what you're looking for here. So then, yeah, so we have Spain, Italy, Croatia, U.S. So if it, oh, that's what I was going to say. If it says that a trip is closed, does that mean it's full? Nobody else can sign up. It either means that it's full or it's not being it's full or it's not being offered at this time. Okay. So um, for also for clarity, we do not have shadowing in the United States because people are always confused by that. The United States is a service research project, and that one is actually not available as of right now. We haven't opened it up for next summer. So all of our, pro or all of our programs are abroad as of right now. Okay. So I'm looking at just the Italy ones. Right? So there's Italy and Spain. So yeah, so you can filter to whatever you're looking for here. And then, so how do people know what dates they are? Do we just click it? Yep. And on there, you'll be able to see the dates. There you go. Yep. Cool. Those are the dates that we have them offered. And you'll be able to see those for, uh, we also have winter break trips for this winter that are one week long. So you'll be able to differentiate those as well, along with the ones that we have available for next summer. Okay. This has all the details here, all the dates, you're breaking it down by month. And then you're talking about kind of anything y'all need to know. Cool. Oh, cool. So then down here we have our hospitals. Yep. And I, San Camilo Forlanini is actually where I, I think that's my group. Okay, <laughs> actually, well, that you just scrolled okay. over. Yeah, that was my group. You could see me right there in the back with the blonde hair by the fountain. Which um, one? Nope. Yep, right there. <laughs> oh, there you are. That's funny. Yeah, so that was my group who went abroad. And that was on one of our... Yeah. Friday excursions that we went on. It was amazing. Nice. Oh, that's awesome. Is that your group too? Yes. Nope. We were at San Camilo Forlanini, which is there's two hospitals in Rome and that's the other one. Okay. I'm talking about the excursions. So yeah, so I feel like a lot of the information's here. Like you said, you can get more information and that look that kind of offer section has that I think this is a cool opportunity. I think it's something that I would have been extremely interested in. I honestly probably would have chosen this maybe over my like summer Amsterdam mission trip. I think that was a really cool trip and I love Amsterdam and I like want to go back because it was so awesome. But I <laughs> gave me volunteer hours, but I, didn't, I really didn't need volunteer hours. I had plenty of that from college. And so I think having something more medically related would have been good. My husband did a medical mission trip in college to El Salvador and he went to med school, but I do think that was very helpful for his application to have that experience. Yeah. There's lots of options out there as with everything, explore your options, ask questions, get all the info. Maybe I'm the only like over researcher in the room. I, can confidently say that I probably research vacations and trips and things that I can do like every day. If you're in the same boat, I think this is worth looking into. So somebody said, Michaela said, does any volunteering happening on the trip or is that really only on like service ones? It sounds like y'all have some like cultural immersion yeah. though. Yes, and no volunteering, but cultural immersion is included on that trip. And that's obviously too, because shadowing for that long, you are pretty tired at the end of the day from being on your feet, following people around, seeing brand new things and being in a new place. I think it'd be a lot to also have volunteering on top of that. But like you said, there is a lot of cultural immersion aspects to it, which make it really awesome. Cool. Yeah. I think the best place is the best place for more information, the website. Yeah. Yes. Okay. And I was just going to say to tag off of what you said, even if you want more information, if you aren't sure if this is what's right for you, I definitely recommend go to the website, fill out some information, and we'll reach out to you as alumni. And that way you can schedule a one-on-one, -on -one, a 20 minute discussion and question session where you can just ask whatever you want, learn more about it and see if it's a good fit for you. Yeah. And I think that's good. Good next step. If you're really interested in really looking at a trip, how far in advance do trips fill up like when do people uh, yeah so making this decision that may be important to cover before we wrap up yeah I always tell students as soon as possible is the best we will have programs available all the way through 
the beginning of next summer. So it's not like everything's going to fill up. It's all going to be done by December and you're going to be out for next summer. But certain cities will fill up. So places like Barcelona, Madrid, Rome, Milan, those will be filled up likely by around Christmas time. And even before then, we've had a few trips that have already closed for this winter and even next summer if it's that popular. That's why I also encourage students to meet with their meet with someone talk it through and see if that's even something they're interested in because that way you're already moving through the process so that if you decide okay I do want to go and I want one of these cities then you've pretty much already gone through the process it's easier for us to help you get onto a program versus kind of waiting and be like oh I don't know maybe and then applying later on and having to go through the process when it's busier and maybe there'll be more closures all that kind of stuff okay yeah that's super helpful We'll make sure everybody has all the links. Hopefully this was helpful to you guys. Something you're excited about or looking into if you're interested. And if you have any questions, let me know and I'll point you in the right direction as well. But thank you, Carson, for your time and sharing all about all of your experiences. And good luck in two weeks.